Hi, everybody, and welcome to the latest episode of Dublin Tech Talks with myself, Gavin Fox, uh, brought to you by Work Human and Marissa Meyer. On the pod today, we speak with uh, Fergal Brady, who is a co founder and CEO of No Friction. Uh, no Friction is a payments platform, um, very successful early doors, three and a half years in. Fergal himself is a, um, a, a very successful entrepreneur, um, came from uh, Blueface floated at the Comcast, has been involved in VC, um, Anacara Robots, and has, and has moved into non-friction. Um, very interesting business, recently won a Fintech Ireland Award. Uh, we discuss everything from no friction into how it's got this market fit, how they found the problem that they wanted to solve, into the entrepreneurial market as we are now, what drives him, uh, and everything in between. Um, really interesting episode, great guy, and uh, we hope you enjoy. Speak to you soon. Thank you. Fergal Brady, CEO, co-founder of No Friction, uh, founder of Blueface, which you've exited very successfully. Um, welcome to Dublin Tech Talks. Thanks, Gavin. Delighted to be here. It's good to hear. <laughs> <laughs> so, love to focus on on No Friction for, for the podcast, but do you want to give a kind of a 30-second overview of, of how you got here today? How I got here today, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, look, I, I, I've been lucky, worked with some great people. So I met Aaron, my co-founder of No Friction, uh, back at the beginning of the Blueface journey. Uh, he was a brilliant engineer. Uh, I was looking for a business idea um, and we, we talked about it and it got started. So that's how we really got started. Uh, Blueface went on to be the fourth largest unified communications company in the world, sold to Comcast, uh, worked with Connor and the guys in Acara, helping spin out of Trinity College. That was brilliant. Um, started a VC fund, Impact Investing Fund. That was great. And then myself and Aaron got talking about our frustration with banking and payments in our business careers and decided that... Uh, we could build something better. Hmm. Well, in particular, he's a he's a he's a geeks geek, you know. He's an engineer's engineer, so he's a proper engineer. And uh, he, yeah, got involved in Bitcoin. And from a technology point of view, he just loved it. Really cutting edge. The sheer level of brain power going into the development of it. You know, if you look on GitHub and look mm. at the development in, in Bitcoin Lightning, for example, you know the amount of of uh, activity is extraordinary. So we just really liked all that. Yeah. Uh, it seemed like maybe this is the future of payments and future of maybe banking, <laughs> if I say it. <laughs> um, Get in the queue. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, so, and then there's all the other stuff around mm. it, which is a little bit controversial, but we really liked it just from a technology point of view. And then we were very frustrated with how we interacted with the banking ecosystem as a business. Mm. And so we decided we could do a better job. And we have. Uh, yeah. We do a much better job uh, in certain ways. Um, now, bear in mind that it's a bit like the old telecoms industry. You know, broadband came along and mobile telephony and IP telephony and people said, oh, that's it. Telecoms are gone. Telcos are finished. And of course, they're not. They just focus on what they do really, really well. And it's the same with, with banking and payments companies. They're doing what they're doing. They'll, they'll do it really well and continue to do it. So we focus on a very specific area. And the big problem we're addressing is a bank account or your current account and your core business platform, you know, your accounting platform, your ERP. As a business owner, this frustrates the hell out of Yeah, me, well, sorry. listen, join the club. Yeah. And it's a very big club. Every single business on the planet has an issue with the fact that when they want to see what's happened with payments, has a payment come in? Has a payment gone out? Mm. Uh, who's made the payment? They have to go to the bank account and they log in. The only portal into the banking world is internet banking. Mm. And internet banking is great as an individual. You know, you got on your mobile, check a payment, you know, that's fine. If you're a business and you've got thousands of payments going through every day, it's an absolute nightmare. Mm. And then you've got your accounting platform, your ERP, and it doesn't know whether something's paid and you've got this manual intervention, you know, you've got the, the analog bridge between this digital platform and this digital platform and what they used to refer to in the old days as sneaker net, <laughs> where somebody's walking yeah. between the two platforms trying to connect them up, you know, with a sheet of paper, handwriting, oh yeah, yeah, F Brady, 275 euro <laughs> reference number. Now, hang on a second, there's a different one. So yeah, so that's what we're solving. So our our, the entire premise of our business is that these two things should be combined. Mm. Your core business application and your current account should be the same thing. 
you know, and all it is, all all, all you're looking at in your internet banking account is your uh, is a ledger mm. which tracks all the transactions. So why not actually have those in your core business platform? And if they're there, well, why don't you initiate payments from your accounting platform? Because you do all your accounts payable, you get them ready. Uh, why not? Why don't you just press a button and go, okay, pay, mm. and it connects to the payments world, sends the payments, marks them as paid, job done. Yeah, you know because the current situation is okay do all my accounts payable mark them as ready to pay print off a sheet of paper or write them down yeah. on the back of a, a, a napkin and then go to internet banking login start setting up beneficiaries yeah. authorize them set up the payment authorize the payment that goes on for hours and so it's the platform you plug into then is it and that plugs into the <clears throat> it, into the other so you 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 on the platform and that plugs into the organizations we've built uh, a core banking platform yeah We've built integrations with all the different payments methods. They're called rails, typically, mm -hmm. to, for moving money. Um, and then we've gone out and got authorization to enable us to actually utilize that platform, implement it, and enable customers to come on board and take uh, participate in it. And we've wrapped it all in this API, and you connect that to your core business application. Mm. We have another way of doing it, which is the halfway house, where we, we also have a portal, but it's just far easier to use with far superior uh, authentication, for yeah. example, you know. So you've been very successful again. So you've got your um, CBI uh, got awarding. Our electronic your, Money Institution uh, authorization, yeah, which is great. Yeah. We, got, we got our VASP registration, which allows us to deal with uh, Bitcoin or Bitcoin yeah. Lightning in the future, which is a, a hedge against the future. So, so we think two, two big milestones. Yeah. Which, two big milestones, Especially yeah. in a fintech, he heavily regulated market like that is Ireland. Yeah. Yes, exactly, yeah. You've got your funding. Yes, we got funding. Congratulations. In. Yeah. And more importantly, you became best uh, digital banking solutions at the FinTech Awards only a couple of nights ago. Which is a testament to the yeah. extraordinary talent and depth in the team. Uh, you know, Aaron and, and, and everybody there uh, built up an amazing team. It's very different when you're going about this for the fifth or sixth yeah. or seventh time and building a platform. You know, you you start out in your 20s and you're trying to build something and you know, how do you do this again? What do you think we should do here? And now it's just, well, this is how you do it. You yeah. Know. And uh, so it's much easier, but at the same time, so we've achieved a lot in a very short space of time. And uh, yeah, I mean, we've built a, basically, we've built a digital banking platform. And were, were, you, were you surprised at the appetite for, for the product? Because it's obviously revenue generating. If you've, if you've, you've, you've got your Series A, so there's, there's obviously something there and, and people want it. Is it were yeah. you surprised at the ease of it or? Well, actually, actually we, did a, we did a seed round really. And uh, that was the funding last year, which was great. Um, and the idea was that we took on uh, some private investment for various reasons. One, because we knew that we'd need to, to go again sometime next year, the end mm. of next year, to 2025 more likely. Um, and we wanted to have time to get the authorizations in place, the regulatory uh, yeah. framework in place. Uh, we needed time to build up the platform and to get a bunch of sort of pilot customers on board so that we could prove each part of, yeah. the, of, the, of, the, of the business. Um, so we'd, we've done all that. And we expected that our API, which is really our core product, uh, we'd aim to be invisible, you know, to a business <laughs> in that, you know, uh, our money moves in, it moves out, it gets reconciled automatically. And actually, I don't know who, how, how it happens, yeah. but under the bonnet, it's no friction, the money move platform. So that's where we want to go. We thought that that would take a long time. And so we built, you know, the portal access and integrations with some of the common business applications to make it, excuse me, easy. Um, and we thought it would take much longer. And then over the last six months in particular, we're getting increasingly large businesses come to us and say, listen, we've been looking for a, a platform like this for three years. We've searched high and low. Yeah. I can't believe there's a business here in <laughs> Dublin doing it. <laughs> this is exactly what we need. Um, and the problems that they're talking about are exactly what our platform was designed to do. And we just thought it would take a little bit longer yeah. for these big companies to come to us, but they're coming to us and we're reaching out to them as well. So the problems they're facing are, you know, from the very simple, listen, we've got, you know, 772 bank accounts across all of Europe and I want to be able to see all of the balances in one place and I want to be say, able to click on them and see all the transactions and I want to get a total balance of all the euro accounts yeah. and all the, you know, Swiss franc accounts, or whatever happens to be. I want all that in one place. Yeah, no problem. Here you go. Done. Yeah. Easy. Um, I want to be able to uh, run my payroll and instead of having to download a CSV file, upload a CSV file, check through it, authorize them all, blah, you know, I want to be able to just press a button and have that done automatically. Yeah, we do that. Um, 
I get a bunch of payments coming in and I get, you know, a thousand euros comes in uh, from a uh, from hundred different people. So a hundred grand comes in, thousand euros from each one. And I want to deduct 5%, send that here. I want to deduct 15% and send that here. And I want to send the balance here, but I want to do that automatically. Mm. Yeah, no problem. We do that. So that's the kind of stuff we do. And this is, it's game changing for a lot of businesses because in this world, the instant economy, people want instant gratification. They want their product delivered quickly or immediately. They want payments uh, reconciled instantly. They want it acknowledged instantly. And that's what we enable. So without this, it's very hard to do that. Yeah, like we just even function, we've like 60 contractors, say, out in site. And we've been able to put that all into, like, I'll be talking to a, a gem who does our accounts very soon. Yeah. I mean, like, to us, the visibility of, of that and, and then when the, the receivables come in and everything like that, it's just as a business owner, you go, yeah, perfect. Absolutely. Great. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and every size of business is just that over the last while in particular, we're getting, we're getting you know, public limited companies, you know, uh, businesses turning over hundreds of millions of mm. euro and they're saying, look, this is a big problem for us. Can you fix it? Yeah, we can definitely do it. Well, like dead or days kill you and not being able to track it and not yeah. getting paid is yeah. probably the yeah. still the number one biggest frustration of any yeah. SME yes. in the world, not always. just Ireland. Always. So always. you have a very captive market there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I mean, it's very, very important to, to to note and to underline that, you know, we're not a payments company yeah. at all. We are an embedded finance company and we're focused on money movement. So we connect up to all the different payments methods because we have to, because we need visibility end to end. But fundamentally, we're an embedded finance company. Yeah, no, it's, it's really clever. So does everything you touch turn into gold or have you had a couple of failings? No, or, 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 or where, where are we at with that as, a, as an entrepreneur? There has to be a couple of... Uh, failings in there? Uh, uh, my, my success has been <laughs> built on the shoulders of giants, as they say. Uh, I've just been really, really lucky to work with some uh, incredibly talented people. Um, you know, Aaron, to start with, uh, you know, is just an unbelievably talented engineer, uh, brilliant developer, brilliant entrepreneur. Um, and yeah, we, we just, we, I suppose we complemented one another very, very well. And that's been the secret, mm. I suppose, of anything that I've touched. Um, I wouldn't say it's turned to gold, but with the help of others, um, they've helped me, you know, turn it into something uh, worthwhile. So I'm generally rubbish at most things myself. Um, <laughs> I'd have to argue that there. Uh, well. and, and the ecosystem that is Dublin, has that allowed you, like, it, I love working in Ireland, I love Dublin, I've been abroad, I know you've travelled extensively as well. Is, is, is there a good ecosystem here for founders, for, for entrepreneurs against other places you've been or, or what do we need to do as as an established tech company or country now to, to make it better? Yeah, I, I suppose I, I, can, I can go at, at many, uh, I go at this at many different, in many different ways. So one of the first businesses that I worked for, actually, I worked for a company called CR2, which I've, I've mentioned yeah. many times before. And actually that grew out of Kindle Banking Systems, which is one of Ireland's most successful software companies mm. and a fintech way back in the day. Um, and it's a bit like the Premier League where history doesn't seem to have existed before, you know, <laughs> Silicon Docks or something came along because it did, you know. So Ireland has in many ways be, always been a tremendous location to locate a business and to scale the business, uh, even internationally, you know, for, for lots and lots of good reasons. Mm. And I think since the first time we started a business in, in Blueface, you know, that was 2004, 2005, Enterprise Ireland were enormously helpful, uh, DBIC, now mm. known as Further. Uh, really, really helpful. So there was a great support mechanism. And now uh, there's all these other fantastic organizations, you know, including the ones I've just mentioned, yeah. but also, you know, all the other usual suspects that pop up, the accelerators, incubators, yeah. um, all the angel fund networks. So there's a fantastic support system here to start a business far, far superior to anything in most other countries. You know, UK, US, OK, leave them aside. But in a European context, um, you know, we had an office in Blueface, we had an office in Italy. Mm. I was, I was, we were located in the biggest accelerator in Southern Europe. And it's just a completely different world. Mm. You know, the lack of support there um, before that came along, uh, the, 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 the contrast with Ireland's extraordinary. So brilliant place to start, brilliant place to scale. I suppose one of the things that you tend to find is that people don't get off the island, which is important and which is something that we, we've already started doing. Um, so, you know, Ireland is a very, very, very small market, yeah. you know, and we all know us and, you know, all the all the old chestnuts come out about it being the size of Manchester or whatever, but it is. 
So you need to get out of it, I think. Uh, it's a great test bed, though. But great test bed, yeah, yeah. 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 Great test bed and great support for starting a business. But but speaking to a lot of, say, fintech founders that, that I speak to, it's, it that because it's so regulated and it, it it's a really solid test base to be able to do it here. Yeah. You're able to go and, and be going, like, we have, you know, with CBI, it never really goes, oh, <laughs> in you well, come. Well, 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 that's it, absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, um, yeah. So, from that point of view, absolutely. It's a great place to start a business, great place to use as a test bed. And then the key is to to try and internationalize as quickly as you can, which businesses are doing. I, I love how you said that because that is, I've spoke to a few people and that was like they, they, they didn't do it quick enough or they for, didn't focus on that as much as they should. So what what is the internationalization plan or can you say? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you don't have to give me the details. There's but some what? great ways of doing it, um, you know. One thing about Ireland is we're looking that we have an enormous number of, uh, you know, foreign multinationals here. Mm. Um, and what uh, sometimes happens if you're lucky or one certainly one strategy that one could pursue is to, you know, try and sign up with one of those companies and then it's working really well here and they go, hey, listen, we need this in Germany and yeah. we need this in the US or we need this in Australia. So that's a great way of doing it. Um, and we're starting to see a little bit of that happen. Um, and the other way of doing it, of course, is just to go, do you know what? Listen, we have to, we're just going to go there, mm. set up and get going and do the same thing over there. You know, and then there's all the you know, country knowledge and so on that you need to bring along. Does that need to be founder led? You know, yeah, it's a, I suspect unless you've got, you know, tremendously experienced, energetic, enthusiastic people who don't want to do anything else. Yeah, because I, 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 you see the successful ones, the, mm. the founders go yeah. a year or two into that location and then build up the, the company there and move on to the next. Yeah, yeah, it certainly helps, you know, it certainly helps. Um, so, yeah, if you can do it, yeah, yeah. But uh, listen, <laughs> who am I for giving advice? Anyway. So you've, you've done really successful start. What, what What is the entrepreneur bug that you got and how did it manifest from when you left college into setting up your first business and moving on? And then caveat that what... If you if you're sitting yourself now, leaving college, what would your advice be to those people? Uh, well, or sitting for, in an organisation that you dislike and you went, actually, I'm going to go and do something myself. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I was unemployable, so I had no choice. <laughs> um, but I, I, I I've said this many times before. I always remember uh, Fergal Quinn, uh, you know, who founded yeah. Super Quinn and so on. I tremendous respect and admiration for him. And uh, you know, I remember him saying something like. You know, I wish I started business earlier. And I think he was 27 when he started. Yeah. And I think when you're young, at that, that kind of age, you know, before life starts getting in the way and you've got all these other responsibilities which weigh heavily on your decision-making mm. process, that's a great time to do it. And after that, you know, what, what generally happens is that when you decide to do something and you commit to do something, it's like pushing a, a rock or a boulder off the top of a hill. You know, once you've actually pushed it, mm. it starts rolling and you kind of can't stop it and it just keeps going. Maybe it'll work out, maybe it won't. But one way or the other, you'll make it work to the extent that you'll either learn a huge amount of mm. stuff and become very attractive for somebody else to hire you or it'll work and you'll have a great business at the end of it. So, yeah, you, know, you, you started um, in four and five, six. That was a real that bubbling part of the Celtic Tiger, if things were going to be, everybody thought everything was going to be successful. Yeah, so the, is, is me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think there is like that kind of time and place that you can start? Like who were the like 10 and 11, some really good businesses came out of when, when it was in the depths of, you know, Ireland was burning. Yeah, uh, yeah. And then you saw in the last four or five years, some really good businesses coming again from, from, the last bump in the market. Yeah. Well, yeah, we started back to, to oh, 04, oh, 05 wasn't a bad time. I was very lucky in that I'd experienced the dot-com boom mm. and dot-com bust and I'd been exposed to what it, what it's like to build a, a fintech startup yeah. actually because that's what CR2 was. So I got some really good experience there and I actually, I did an MBA and I sort of spent the year and a half trying to figure out what it was I wanted to do. And I knew I wanted to start a business, but I wasn't sure. And then I was lucky enough to meet Aaron and, and, and Blueface started. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, don't, I don't know if there's a, like a, it's, it's a good time to start. Like really what you want to do is you want to find a problem that businesses have or that people have yeah. and solve it and just make sure that the problem is big enough that they'll pay you to fix it for them. That's fundamentally, yeah. that's what it is, you know, fundamentally. Uh, if you can do that, it's going to work. Yeah. It's going to work one way or the other. You know, I speak to a founder that built a really nice product, but nobody would pay for it. Yeah, well, that's, and, and, yeah, there you go. And, and you they know. had to redevelop their whole yeah. mindset of what yeah, they had to do. Yeah, that's it, you know. Actually, 
it's funny because you know I, I, I sometimes I've, I've spoken about it before. I remember doing a case study in in, in you know in business school and the Nespresso machine was a case study, and I don't really remember all of the details of it, but it was a complete flop to start with, and they were going to mm. can it, you know, and they just kind of came at it at a different angle, um, and it took time as well. So there's this idea of product market fit, but there's also this pro uh, market timing. Mm. So you can have the product market fit, but not the timing, um, but when you can get the two synchronized, yeah. then things can start happening. So they were lucky enough because they had the backing of an enormous company yeah. to, you know, they had keep enough runway to keep going. They had a bit of runway, yeah. So, uh, but that was, yeah, the Nespresso machine was going to be written off to start. And then, of course, it uh, everything changed. People started using it. And uh, and then it was like it was a brilliant product, you know. So. Yeah. Just, just uh, won't take much more of your time. The, the no friction journey, was that, you talked about the customer side of it. Did you do, were you customer obsessed as people talk about? Were you doing a lot of research first or was it more build a concept and go from there? What What way did you come about that problem? I, we were our own guinea pigs, so we knew that we had a problem and we spoke to other businesses, yeah, um, and we did some research that way and we knew that, yeah, other businesses definitely have this problem. Um, and it's a it's a reasonably intractable problem because, you know, without access to these payments rails yeah. and you need to be regulated to get access to them really, without that it's very hard to fix. And fintechs typically were more fin, less tech. Yeah. And there was very little combination of you know, very thin and very tech yeah. and bringing the two together and having, yeah. you know, a bunch of people who actually knew both areas really, really well and at the same time knew the business problems really, really well. So that's quite unusual. Um, so from that respect, yeah, we did the market research by talking to people, but we knew ourselves yeah. that this was a big problem because we experienced it. Yeah, and that's... Yeah. You're annoyed enough. Yeah, it's like it's like waiting on the bus. Yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah, there's a yeah. better way. Well, to I'm do gonna this. buy a bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So closing off, uh, what? Twelve months for sitting down again. Where do you where do you think the business? Where do you want the business to be, or where do you think the kind of the journey is going to go? We, we we just want to continue to grow at the kind of rate we're growing at now. Um, signing up these uh, these customers, solving problems for them. It's extremely satisfying to see this working. Yeah, you know when you've seen a business and they got you know four or five people whose day job is distracted so much that they have to sit down and do all this manual processing mm. stuff. You know, so freeing them up so they can go and do up proper productive stuff. Seeing that's fantastic. You know, yeah. seeing, um, so we just want to continue doing that. Do every do things right. Um, sign up some international customers and just keep on growing. Get back on the jet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> back on the bicycle, more like, yeah. I'm more a bicycle man. <laughs> yeah. Fergal Brady, CEO, co-founder of No Friction. Thank you very much for taking time to join us here in Dublin Tech Talks today. Thanks very much, Gavin. Thanks, Cheers.